So here we're at the pickaxe builder. You can click here to make a studio, monetize your tools, or if you go to your dashboard, you can click here to add a studio. So let's create one together. So I'm going to make a studio with a couple tools that I recently made that are around the real estate use cases of AI. So we have a property listings generator in a house selling checklist. This generates housing listings, and this helps real estate agents go through every uh, thing they need to do in order to sell a house from filing the right paperwork to writing the listing. So we're going to click next. We're going to call this real estate helper. It helps with real estate stuff using AI. And now we're going to make some choices. What type of studio is this? You can either make it public or invite only. Public means that anyone with the link will be able to see your studio and sign up or use it as much as you know you allow free users to use it. Invite only means that anyone that visits it will get a sort of access denied pop-up unless their email has been specifically approved. So depending on your use case, you're gonna want one of these. If you're trying to sell it to the widest audience possible, public is good. If you're using it for internal purposes, invite only is great. I'm gonna make mine public. Next, how do I wanna charge for it? Do I want subscriptions, sort of recurring monthly payments? That means once someone signs up, they'll just keep paying me uh, that amount of money every month until they cancel. Or is it sort of a one-time payment, like buying a product off of Amazon? I'm going to do subscriptions. And then here, we can set our tiers. What guest uses are is people who are not logged in. So people that show up, they have no idea what the product is, you don't know who they are, they haven't given an email. How many uses do you want to give them? And which tools do you want them to use? I'm going to let them use the property listings generator, but not the house selling checklist. And I'm going to give them five uses. Pickaxe tracks this via IP address. So it's hard to abuse the system unless you really go out of the way. Next, we're at our subscription tiers. Uh, the, this member tier is free, but it means they must sign up with an email. Well, if they give me their email, I'm going to give them 10 more uses. And then, if they want to pay, I will give them 100 uses. How much should they pay? 10 seems great, but I actually think these tools are really great, so I'm going to have them pay $25. I'm going to click Next. Uh, it wants me to set up my Stripe account. You can do that here, or you can connect to an existing account if you already have one. But I'm just going to skip for convenience. We already have some uh, templates as far as getting you started with design. I'm going to pick this one. But you can customize every element of this. Great. Now we're in the sort of studio management page. We have a few tabs here to help you control the pages, the design, monitoring, access. And you can toggle all of the settings that we set on the previous page. I'm going to walk you through each of these one by one. So first off, this is the sort of preview we have of the studio. It says my email up here because I'm viewing it as an owner, but we can view it as a sort of member user. Or we can even view it as a guest, in which case we do the login and sign up. I'm going to continue viewing it as the owner just for simplicity. Now, under pages, we can see all the different pages of our studio. We have our landing page, which is this. But we also have the sort of individual pages where my tools appear in addition to the home page, and even an account page. Now, I'm going to, going to show you some stuff on the landing page really quick. Here, if we click the pencil button, we can edit all sorts of stuff here. So let's say we want to add a logo to our studio. Let's add this sort of little generic house logo. Perfect. We can also decide not to show certain things. We can hide all sorts of text. If we also want to rename our tool, we can do so up here. And we can also edit all of this text simply by hovering over it and typing into it. We can also turn off sections of all these sorts of things um, and customize all of the colors. I'm not going to get too into this because there's a lot that I want to show you, but there's all sorts of customization that you can do in this page. Another great thing to look at are the pop-ups. These are all the sort of calls to actions and pop-ups that your users will get while they're using your app. And it's another way that you can white label uh, your tool. Here you can upload your own logo into these pop-ups. You can change it, say, hold on there. You need to sign up, whatever you want. We also have all the upgrade messages here. So when someone runs out of uses within a chat, these are the messages they'll get. So right now it's something kind of generic. You can say, whoops. You need to upgrade to do that. 
You can even customize what the buttons say. Maybe you think upgrade's kind of lame. You want to use level up. Really, you can do whatever you want here. Anytime you want to save your changes too, you should save it up here. I canceled mine just because I want to kind of move through this process. Another great thing to look at is a design page. Here you can customize every element of this. I'm just going to show you what's in content because there's some important stuff in there. One of the first things is language. We have a huge international user base at Pickaxe, so many people want to quickly translate it to another language. So here we see all the user-facing copy change. We can put it into Spanish, Turkish, but I'm going to keep it into English just because I understand it a little bit better. Here, if you're a gold user, you can also white label the tool. So right here it says powered by Pickaxe, and this is a link back to our Pickaxe website. But you can easily remove this just by toggling white label. You can also hide the logos, all sorts of stuff. You can even add new studio logos here. There's all sorts of stuff you can do. Now, you can probably imagine what's other typography, color, buttons, and forms. Just a bunch of settings and toggles to let you customize all of the elements of this. From what these bubbles look like, to the text used here, to the size. It's great stuff, but I'm not going to get into it today. Then here, in the monitor section, we let you view all the people that are using your tools. I just made mine, so no one's using it. But here, as, you, as uh, your studio is used and populated with users and uses, you'll see all of it pop up here. You can even click here to manage users. And you can, uh, if you click on them, upgrade them, change their status, all sorts of stuff. And if you're on an invite-only studio, this is also the place where you can invite people to join your studio. Finally, we have the Access tab. And here you'll recognize some key settings that we set when we created the studio. You can always change these here, except for subscription and one-time payment. Once you've picked one, you need to pick a, stick with it for a certain studio. But down here we can edit our tiers. Maybe I think it's a little too harsh to only give guest users five uses. So I'm going to upgrade them to 10. You'll notice I can't go above 10 because my next tier only has 10. So maybe I can set this to 50. And maybe I thought 25 was a little expensive. I'm going to put it down to 10 and make it infinity uses. And if you want to add more tiers, you can always add more. So I've already added another tier and I can, you know, change the price here to 50. I can rename these. Um, whatever you want. And at any time you want, you can also delete tiers. 